has these uh, two squares, this blue and gray one, so you can see the UV map. You can also go over here and hit this button of this, uh, this person that's grayed out to dim the background image so you can see what's going on. So here's the UV coordinates of this, um, of this light fixture that I've already went ahead and UV mapped. And you have to make sure that your object is properly UV mapped like this or however you decide to UV map it to make sure that the brushed metal look is applied correctly. So let me close that. Let me go back to view image so you can see the image. So basically the image has these sort of grains and you can create this, this image in pretty much any uh, image editing program. Photoshop, you can use Corel Painter, you can use uh, the GIMP, you can use a lot of software to do this. It's a very simple um, image of these sort of metallic grains. And you want to make sure that this thing's in a grayscale, so it's black and white. Basically, the brighter areas are going to determine where the brush metal strokes are, and the darker areas are going to determine where there's no reflectivity or no specular shade. Okay? And this brushed metal look of this image is going to transfer over in the reflection map, and it's going to make the object look like it's, uh, got it, like it's a brushed metal surface. So let me close that. Also, I want to make sure I take this uh, quadratic filter off, which is on by default. Just turn the filter off completely. Close that. And let's go back to the material attributes of the uh, light fixture here, the brushed metal. Okay, so now that I have my reflection map plugged in right there, let's do render region and see what we get. All right, so this is what I have. It's a little bit difficult to see, but if you look pretty closely, you can see that there's these sort of strokes or this sort of uh, grain that goes horizontally here, that's because of the reflection map. But there's another important parameter that's related to anisotropy that, uh, that you have to be aware of, and that's the rotation parameter, okay? This is a very important parameter. As you can see here up in the texture sample, my, my grain here, or my specular shading, is going horizontally from left to right. If you change the rotation, you can see in the texture sample up here that 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 specular shading is actually rotating and its angle is changing based on my rotation down here. So let's go for rotation of about 0.25, so a quarter, to basically make this thing flip and make it go up and down as opposed to left and right. So it's going to be vertical now. Let's go ahead and render that out again. Do a render region. And there we go. Basically now the shading is going up and down. You see that? It's not going sideways anymore. And that's one thing that you want to uh, be aware of. The way that this works is, in the real world, when you have a brushed metal surface, the specular shading should always, always go perpendicular to the grain. So if your grain is going from left to right, your specular shading should go from top to bottom. And if, you're, uh, if your grain, or if these little brushed metal strokes in your image, it are going from top to bottom, if they're vertical, you want to make sure that the specular shading here is going horizontal. Because that's the way it works. It works by opposites. That's just the way that it works in real life. So if you're trying to do photorealistic brush metal surface, you need to make sure that you pay attention to this rotation parameter and also the orientation of the grain in your texture image, or else the shading is going to come out completely wrong and it's not going to look realistic. Okay, so there we go. So now we have these nice cranes and basically we've created this nice brush metal look to our surface. So now we got these parameters set up. That, uh, that pretty much is going to do it. That's our brushed metal surface. Okay, so let's close that. Let's also close the uh, render view here. All right, so to finish this scene off, let me actually unhide the light that I had here before. So I'll, hold, I'll go to the hot box, I'll go to window, and I'll open up the outliner. You've seen the outliner is a list of all the objects in my scene. Any objects that are hidden right now will, be, uh, will have their name in blue text, in dark blue. So it might be a little bit difficult to see, um, but it's this one right here. So it's this light here in dark blue, which is the uh, ceiling light. So just select it, and with it selected, hold down Shift and hit H on the keyboard to unhide it. Close that. So now our light is back. Okay, so now let's go back to the view options here for the uh, camera viewport. Let's go to bookmarks and let's go to render one. Okay, and uh, next thing we probably want to do just to finish this thing off is increase all of the parameters for uh, the objects 
uh, in our scene so this thing renders out good because right now if I do a render it renders out pretty fast only 16 seconds but as you can see this the quality of this is horrible there's graininess and artifacts all over the place this thing just looks, uh, it's totally unacceptable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here. And in the next video, very quickly, we're just going to go into all the shaders that we need to. Increase any uh, parameters and quality settings we need to. Increase our render settings and uh, just do a final render. So we'll do that in the next video and I'll see you there.